Okay. Okay, looks like we are live. Not the best connection. Okay, then. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nerds at Large reaction to the Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct for June 5th, 2019. I am one of the Nerds at Large, Jeff Mayo. Oh, boy. We are about a minute out from this direct starting. It's early. But I am excited. Let's see if we're live. Let's see. What am I expecting out of this direct? I'm expecting the release date. I'm expecting the box legendaries. See what those are all about. Obviously, see some new Pokemon. I think it's too early to see the first starter evolutions, but. Um, but yeah, I am excited. I saw something about some leaks. Didn't really look into them because they happened late last night. So when I got out this morning, it's like, eh, got an hour left. Might as well not look at them if they're correct and just enjoy. Enjoy the Pokemon company showing me all this stuff for themselves. Be surprised for the people. So yeah, oh, here we go. Welcome to Pokemon Direct. I'm Ishihara from the Pokemon Company. Today, I would like to provide the latest news about the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games. Give it to me. To begin, please take a look at this video. Okay. Switch! Yeah. Ooh. The new rival? Yeah, it's where you probably pick the Pokemon. Ooh. Look at that turtle. What is that? Okay, Pokemon out in the field. That's cool. Oh, come on. Well, this isn't working out well. What in the world? What in the world? What? <laughs> Why is it so good? The new Pokemon Gym? I already started enough time. What's with that big stuff? Hello, 
I'm Masuda from Game Freak. Hi, I'm Omori from Game Freak. What did you think of the video? Today, we would like to deliver the latest news on Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield to all of you around the world, right here from Game Freak's offices where development is underway. You can take on the role of the main character, who resides in the Galar region. After choosing Grookey, Scorbunny, or Sobble as your first partner Pokemon, you will embark on an adventure to become the champion. Your journey will take you through vast and lush grasslands, towns in which you will find humans and Pokemon working together, and many other locations filled with rich personality. Pokemon battles are the most popular form of entertainment in the Gala region. Stadiums across the Gala region are frequently filled with cheering crowds that have gathered to witness battles between gym leaders and challengers. Okay. The excitement of these battles is often broadcast on television in the Gala region as well. The most exciting part of visiting a new region is, of course, encountering Pokemon that you've never seen before. To tell you more about some of the Pokemon that reside in the Gala region, I'd like to hand it over to James, the art director on these games. Hey, Jamie. Hello. I'm James Turner from Game Freak. Hi, Zeke. I worked as the art director for these games. There are a lot of never-before-seen Pokémon that await you in the Gala region. What's the But bird allow one? me to introduce you to just a few of them. The first Pokémon I'd like to show you is Wooloo. Wooloo. <laughs> this Pokémon's defining characteristic is its fluffy fur, which is treasured by weavers in a town in the Gala region who use it to craft popular specialty goods. This Pokemon here is Gossifleur, the flowering Pokemon. Gossifleur favors places with clean air and water, and its pollen is said to have healing properties. This next Pokemon is called Dreadnor, yeah, the quiet Dreadnor. Pokemon. The sharp and jagged edges of its jaw allow it to bite off chunks of rock and iron. That's one I can see going it's either way as far as it makes it a difficult Pokemon to tame for all but the most experienced trainers. This Pokemon that can be seen flying steadily through the sky is called Corviknight. It puts its skills so. to use when working as a flying taxi, which will take the player back to any town he or she has previously mm, visited. Okay, so that's how they're doing flying. As many of you Asian already know, cool. some Pokemon can evolve, no. changing their appearance and becoming stronger in the process. Okay. Gossifleur is one of these Pokemon. When Gossifleur evolves... All right, we saw that one. It becomes Eldegoss. Definitely gonna be As another one. As you can one. see, there are Probably now small again. seeds scattered across its fuzzy head. These seeds are said to promote growth in plants and can revitalize both people and Pokemon. That's all I can show you this time. Dang it. There are lots more Pokemon living in the Gala region for you to discover. Of course, you can look forward to finding many Pokemon you're already familiar with. I hope you're as excited as we are to encounter the amazing variety of Pokemon that inhabit the Gala region. Meeting lots of Pokemon is one of the thrills of the adventure. And where you will find the widest variety of Pokemon out of anywhere in the Gala region is in a place called the Wild Area. This wild area stretches between cities and is filled with abundant nature as far as the eye can see. Different Pokemon can appear depending on where you are and what the weather is like. Okay. Meaning there will be new discoveries for you each day. Wild Steelix? Some of you may already have noticed, but while adventuring through this area, you have control over the camera, allowing you to better hey. search for items and Pokemon. Search far and wide in the tall grass, in the skies above, and even in the lakes, for you never know what you might find. 
In certain locations in the Gala region, a new phenomenon can be triggered that makes a Pokemon giant in size and gives it incredible strength. This phenomenon is called Dynamaxing. Dynamaxing opens up new possibilities in the heated battles performed by trainers and their Pokemon. For more details, I would like to turn it over to Iwao, the planning director for the games. Hi, I'm Iwao from Game Freak. It looks like it might be the wild Pokemon but Sword be fine. and Pokemon Shield. Let me tell you more about the new Dynamax feature, which will surely bring about all new strategies to Pokemon battles. Pokemon from the Gala region can Dynamax to not only become massive in size, but also boost their power. Only certain Pokemon? All the moves they know turn into powerful max moves. Dynamaxing can be used once per battle. However, the Pokemon will revert to normal after three turns. Okay. So, you need to choose wisely when to trigger it. Mastering Dynamax will be key to becoming a full-fledged Pokemon trainer in these games. Remember that wild area we told you about? If you connect to other players, you'll find more ways to play there. One of these new multiplayer features is called Max Raid Battles, in which four Pokemon trainers can join forces to challenge wild Dynamax Pokemon. Hmm. In Max Raid Battles, the wild Dynamax Pokemon keeps its giant form for the entire battle. Not only that, it also has special powers that make it an extremely formidable opponent. Only one of these four players who have teamed up for the Max Raid battle will be able to Dynamax their Pokemon in each battle. So coordinating with your team will be crucial when taking on these powerful wild Pokemon. Oh no, giant beware. If you and your allies manage to emerge victorious, you will get a chance to capture the Pokemon in a truly dynamic catch sequence. Maybe only one person gets it? The Pokemon that you can take on in Max Raid battles also vary depending on where you are in the wild area and the state of the weather. Among these different Pokemon are some that can only be caught after you defeat them in Max Raid battles. So okay. we hope trainers will join forces and test their skills against a variety of Pokemon. Max Raid Battles features strategic, cooperative four-player gameplay against a single Pokemon, which is a first for the main series of Pokemon games. It's going to be a ton of fun to use your Nintendo Switch system's local wireless functionality to tackle these battles with friends in person and experience the excitement together. So, you can also wild connect with other Pokemon players field, over the internet to enjoy I'm playing like with other really trainers from all around lots. the globe. So I hope you'll try Max Raid Battles we'll with see. all sorts of other players. Next, I would like to introduce some of the people you'll encounter on your adventure. This guy is the greatest trainer in the Gala region, and Shit. also the current champion. His name is Leon. In a region where Pokemon battles are so widely enjoyed, his undefeated record in official matches is all the more incredible. His popularity is only enhanced by his shining sure. personality, winning him the adoration of trainers across the region. It's no exaggeration to say that he is the most prominent trainer in all of Gala. The champion has a younger brother who also happens to be one of your rivals. Uh, one. His name is Hop. Hop. Hop dreams to one day become champion just like his elder brother and he trains vigorously every day towards this goal. His journey through the Gala region begins on the same day as yours. On your journey, you and Hop will receive a great deal of support from these two characters. Professor Magnolia is the professor of the Gala region okay. and specializes in researching the Dynamax phenomenon. Sonia is her granddaughter and also serves as her assistant. Their abundant wisdom and sound advice will surely come in handy throughout your adventure. Next, I would like to talk about the Pokemon gyms in the Gala region. You and your rival will need to take on the Pokemon gyms throughout the region 
in order to achieve your goal of becoming champion. These gym stadiums are constructed in very special locations that allow for Pokémon to be Dynamaxed. The gym leaders also have extremely powerful Dynamax Pokémon on their teams, so you will need to counter them with some of your own. Battles between two Dynamax Pokémon are explosive and will cause the energy and excitement in the stadium to reach its peak. Let me introduce one of the gym leaders to you. This is the Grass-type expert, Milo. This gym leader is all about enjoying battles alongside his trustworthy pretty much like an partner, older buffer and you will have to catcher. overcome his tenacious fighting style to continue your journey. Look forward to facing many more heated battles against gym leaders over the course of your adventure. We've shown off quite a bit today, but I have one more video I would like you to see. Please take a look. Okay, not actual gameplay. What are you doing? Okay, the place. Here we go. Damn. Okay. Really to use sword and shield wolves. Pokemon you saw in the video just now are in fact legendary Pokemon of the Gala region called Zacian and Zamazenta. Zamas. Okay. Look forward to discovering for yourself just what role Zacian and Zamazenta will play in the story. I hope you enjoyed today's Pokemon Direct. Of course, what we revealed today is just a small part of what you will find in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. There are many more Pokemon and interesting characters for you to discover in the Galar region. We're putting everything we've got here at Game Freak into making Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield a game that everyone around the world will enjoy. Please look forward to it. Wait, we're really not getting a release date? Thanks to all of our guests from Game Freak. Finally, I would like to announce the release date. Okay, here we go. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Okay, that's at least probably true. I'm nervous they are. On November 15th, 2019, as a global simultaneous release. And starting today, you can mm. pre-order a special double pack. Stay tuned for more information. I hope you will look forward to your new Pokemon adventure in the Galar region. Thank you for watching. Okay. Let's take a look back and see what we got. Um... On sword and Pokemon Shield games. So let's go through it real quick. Trailer. Okay, for the chat. Now it's time trouble loading. Okay, so yeah, obvious. 
something that was really obvious looking at this. Ooh, new bike, it looks like. Okay, seeing my bike's in the water. Okay, that's cool. Um, but, like, while Pokemon roam out on the fields, it looks like it only insert these um, wild, big wild areas. I think they were just called wild areas. It looks like those are the only places that um, they might roam, and then during maybe regular routes where there's grass, they're wild encounter Pokemon. Um, so, in previous discussions with Sword and Shield and all that kind of stuff, I like the idea while the Pokemon roaming the um, field because obviously it makes the world look more alive and everything. Pokemon actually live in the world and all that kind of stuff. That's cool. But from a gameplay standpoint, it really hurts in Nuzlocke because it's kind of hard to make the whole random thing and all that, especially with the whole big wide open area. It looks like it might... You might really need to twist the rules around to make it work for these games, which can be done. But, and that's not the most important thing. This is a personal thing, and generally I'm okay with this choice. I know it makes a lot of people happy. Um, obviously, in this first trailer, they started, you know, they started this whole thing out with the, whatever it was called, Dynamax Pokemon, the big ones, like, what? <laughs> So that would be crazy, and then the whole multiplayer thing will be interesting. I'm so curious. Let's see. Yeah, let's just go. Okay. Ah, dang it. Okay. Dead. Killed it. Things being a pain in the butt. Okay, here we go. Can't explain the beginning of the journey. We know all about that. We're not cowards. Um, let's see. Why well, say cowards? I don't know, whatever. Um. Yeah, I got this. Art director guy from a new Pokemon, Wooloo. What's they shoot the types for these? I wonder if they have them up anywhere about what type of Pokemon these are. Because, obviously, designs are important as far as, you know, whether you like the Pokemon or not. But, types are also important, so you have, can maybe have a balanced team. Like, if we lose just a straight up normal Pokemon, less exciting. Um... <laughs> Got this little flower thing that we saw evolve to the big cotton thing with seeds in its little hair. Looks cute. Dreadnought looks pretty cool. Like I said during the direct, this Pokemon, I could see go either way. It could either evolve, probably only once at most, or this is it. This is its only stage, and it's not the strongest Pokemon. But it looks like... And this is promotional stuff, so it doesn't really mi mean much, honestly. It was like showing an early, so it probably does evolve. This might be a little later. Now, Corviknight looks cool. Um, Cor it's obviously Edgelord. It's a raven, so that makes sense. Um, being a little Edgelordy, And find it cool that... Well, we know this is how they're going to deal with flying. Um in the, these games instead of uh, you know again they're not there's only like they're gonna have hms they didn't straight out said it but we know we should at this point just expect them not to be in we should not be surprised you know most people play aren't but it's i like it how they pretty much have a pokemon that hey this is your your taxi service that's pretty cool other ghost which is his name the first gym leader's main Pokemon. Probably the second stage out of three stage set of Pokemon. Let's see. And why is my
Did I lose it? Okay. Um, yeah, the wild area, which looks like might be where there are a bunch of Pokemon roaming around, which is cool, like I said. Like how we get a look in the phone. Seeing a lot of Gen 1, though. Wild Steelix. That is crazy. Do not expect that. And something huge they mentioned, and it sounds like it might just be in this air, the wild areas, is you can actually rotate the camera. <laughs> I know this, it's a crazy thing to, you know, point out in this day and age, but it hasn't been done in a mainline Pokemon game. So... It's crazy. Really crazy. Um, so I know there are some people that were for the camera, like may may not get it if they didn't have this. So I wonder if this appeases those people. We will see. Dynamax thing is interesting. It's this seems to be the generations Mega Evolutions and Z moves. Um, how do I feel about it? Uh, honestly. The initial reaction is kind of like, that's kind of funny or whatever, cool, but it's, I feel like this is kind of lame compared to, um, Z moves and Mega Evolutions, because those were kind of fancy, and, you know, it's kind of exciting, oh, what Pokemon got exclusive ones, or in Mega Evolution case, what Pokemon Mega Evolved anyway, but this, it's, from what we can tell, it's like any Pokemon can do this, and it just makes them big, and then just gives replaces their move set which is very generic versions of those moves that fit the whole the dynamaxing thing just make them big so not as interesting to me honestly the max rate battles are pretty cool it's just a nice multiplayer thing that's you know to try to catch pokemon i guess this is, this is the closest thing to a kind of pokemon go-ish thing Working together to catch Pokemon. Only one Pokemon can Dynamax at a time. Or only one out of the group of people. Only one person's Pokemon out of the group of people can Dynamax. And then it seems like that's the one who throws the ball. So I'm curious if it means that that's the only one who catches the Pokemon. So it kind of leaves a question of... Other than, you know, working with p other people and maybe friends and that kind of stuff. But... This is Pokemon Nintendo, so wouldn't be too surprised. This is just random, like who you're grouped with. What's kind of the incentive for other people if they don't get the Pokemon? Um, they talk about gyms, and to not surprise, the big stadiums are gyms. Um, yeah. Well, they didn't get to gyms. Okay. They talked about characters. They talked about your rival Hop, I think they said his name was. And Leon, who is the champion. And it was kind of a cool thing just from a story standpoint that the champion is related to your rival. So maybe more story, interesting story stuff can go on. Let's hope. We talk about the professor and her granddaughter. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Then they get to the gym battles. You have this grass guy who... Honestly, looking at the Pokemon, it's probably and everything probably gonna be the first gym or at least the second one at most. I know people like Game Explain probably saw like, oh, this is the obvious one, but I can't remember that. It's a, it's been about three months since that stuff came out. Um, so yeah, they talked about gyms being big, big things in this. We have a giant audience and a stadium and Teleline stuff, so that's cool. Makes the whole gym thing seem more like an event and. It matters to the region more than many other games have. We'll see how that's implemented. Then, they show a little cinematic showing off the legend box legendaries, which seem to be just wolves. One has a sword in its mouth. The other one just has, a, like, a shield main thing. And their names are pretty crazy. All right. Let's see. Zamazenta. 
and Zacian. Pokemon Z? Um, yeah. Then they go on. Release date, November 5th. Not too crazy. Not too surprising. So, November is starting to get bigger. I'm excited for this game. Let's talk about a double pack. We'll see what the price about that. that is. Probably not going to get that unless I'm doing it to split someone else. But yeah. Very solid Pokemon Direct. I think it gave us the kind of information we needed at this point. Giving the release date, Box Legendaries, a couple new Pokemon, how gyms work, more about the wild Pokemon. The, I guess the main battle gimmick of this one. It gave a lot of information. Nothing too crazy, wild, exciting. Um, but very solid. Still very excited for this game. Excited to learn more. Excited to see new Pokemon. Hopefully they ramp that up because this is the first time we've seen new Pokemon for this game since the reveal with the starters. Okay. So, I think that is all for me. Okay, so, this is what's kind of pretty much the beginning of E3 for me personally, because we're only a couple days away. So, you can expect a lot more reactions and talk when the E3 conferences officially start. Might do, I don't know when this is exactly going up on YouTube. I'm, it might already be up by the time when this is as well, but I'm thinking about doing a reaction to Stadia, but... My connection is not good for some reason, so I may not do that. Um, then you can expect reactions for the Microsoft E3 conference, conference Bethesda. Um, Square Enix is in attendance at the very least. I won't be able to do it live, but maybe someone will do Ubisoft and the kind of funny showcase, at the very least, to made Devolvers and stuff. We will see. Okay. Well, I believe that's everything. So... Bye.